Hey guys, it's Lisa and Bill, and today we are doing a fun video, well, an educational video for you guys um, regarding placenta encapsulation. Um, I'm having Bill with me because I was in the hospital the day after I had Gemma, so he was the one who actually had to come home and meet our placenta encapsulation specialist and work with her for the following two days. So he knows everything that went on behind the scenes while I was laying in the bed taking care of Gemma. Um, what? That I can remember with three hours of sleep. Yeah. yeah. Right. But because we lay down. Oh yeah. Four thirty in the morning after yeah. you had her, and then I was up at. I stayed up. Seven. I, I was eating a sandwich. Yeah. I want to say I was up at seven because yeah. I want to say I had to meet her at home at. He had o'clock. to bring the placenta home the next morning. Anyway. In the bucket. So in a bucket. Yummy. Um, okay, so we were going to originally do this video with my placenta encapsulation specialist. However. She has four children. She does this job, placenta encapsulation. She's she has a very busy schedule. So us meeting up was not working. So I emailed her all of the questions that you guys sent me and she emailed me back all the answers and we are going to provide you with all the answers because I think this is really cool stuff. I'm all for it. I still have placenta in my fridge. I'm actually taking it right now. Um, she's having me take it while, while my hormones get back balanced after my miscarriage. I mean, it's, I think it's helpful for a lot of stuff. So. First of all, getting my placenta, we'll talk about our little blurb first and then we'll go over the questions because there's probably about 15 questions, I would say. Um, so getting my placenta, my doctor was amazing because basically after I gave birth to Gemma, I heard somebody say, my doula said she wants her placenta and somebody else in the room said she can't have it. And my doctor said, that's hers. She can have it if she wants it. No, we had to speak up. We, well, there were yeah, a couple because uh, your doula said no she wants it mm -hmm. and then she then somebody there were in the two room, of the I other two of the nurses, other nurses yeah. uh, started to put up a stink and then I said something and then I think your mom said something everybody was and, then saying the, so. and then the doctor's like it's hers why can't she yeah. have it the doctor's like it's hers why can't she have it so then is everybody she asked if it was contaminated is it contaminated yeah. no is yeah. there a reason she can't have it right no then give it to her right is, and she so, was, and then everybody in the room kind of turned around and went their way and we got our placenta so so yeah yeah Talk to your doctor ahead of time. Don't just be quiet, you know, yeah. like definitely speak up and put up a stink because some hospitals are just weird about it. And that's what we found out was yeah. that the hospital that we were at, they don't like giving that away. Yeah. Like it's theirs or something. Right. So. She tried to use the excuse that, oh, we need to send it away to test and they need a, a little chunk. piece of it. Yeah. A so little chunk of it. I'll, I mean, there's tons of info here that she gave us, so I will I will provide you with that. I'm just telling you our experience. So the next morning, Bill had to go ask for our placenta. They gave it to him in a bucket. Yep. Like a <laughs> bucket you'd go get uh, five pounds of roast beef in. <laughs> um, and then what? You came home. I vaguely remember driving home. And then uh, she was here. and um, She met us at, our, at, this, at yes, our house. She, she came to she, our house. She comes to your house, or at least... Ours did. I think yeah. they all do, don't they? I'm pretty sure they all do, yeah. Um, and uh, she came in. She had her own cleaning supplies. Uh, I remember a bucket of them. She sterilizes, the gloves, yeah. All of the, the, the cleaning uh, solution. She cleared off the island, and then she cleared off the um, countertop by the kitchen sink. Sanitized everything. Um... And I was like glad that Lisa wasn't there because she'd probably be mortified. Oh my God. Um, I was mortified because, you know, my water broke unexpectedly. My house was not the way it should have been when we left. It's lived in. It's lived in. But I mean, there was, I'm sure there was dishes it's in the fine. sink. I'm sure there was it's a mess. Fine. And I was, yeah, I was a little, no, I was a little. There were no dishes in the sink. Okay. Well, anyway. We do the dishes. So. Anyway. Um, so she sanitized everything. And uh, the whole time she was telling me about code and health code and um all of the things that go into making sure that the uh, place that she's doing this is ready and up all up to code she was very much about all of that um what did she do first did i want to say she it? boiled yeah she boiled it first um if you've never seen it i'm sure you've got pictures i'll put a picture in here of do you have what before it, um you know, I do have a before picture. If I can, I'll insert the before picture here. It's okay. kind of gross. I'll put it. It looks, it looks like 
I'm gonna put a, a giant disclaimer. Liver. Yeah, I'll, like, I'll just... if, if you know if you ever bought liver, it kind of looks like, you know, it's probably about, I don't know, yay big. So this is what it looked like before she boiled it. And this is what it looked like after she boiled it. Cheeseburger. It does look like a cheeseburger a little it bit. It did not smell good. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it, it did not smell good at all. So. Um, so then she had. Uh, she had her. What was the machine? What does it do? It. It uh, dehydrates. Or dehydrator. Yeah. It dehydrates yeah. it. So. Um, she uh, chopped it up into pieces. I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right. Yeah, she boiled it, chopped it up into into small pieces, put it in the dehydrator, and um, 24 hours. I want to say yeah. it needed to run for 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. So um, she left. I went back to the hospital. Question. Yes. Before she boiled it, did you see her put the stamp on the paper? Because she made me a piece of placenta oh, that's art. that's right. Yes. She said she does that for all of her clients. So after she took it out of the bucket, she uh, she put it on a piece of like cardboard paper. I'll put a picture of that here too. Yeah, and, it's um, called placenta art. And uh, it, there was a lot of blood in it oh, really in there. So she, she laid it on and it's, made that. I love it. It was on my fridge until a few months ago, actually. Um, and then also my umbilical cord. She also took the umbilical cord and shaped it into a heart. Which I will put a picture of here. And uh, put that in the dehydrator. dehydrator. Yeah. I have a before and after picture actually too, so I'll, I'll answer that yeah, here that for was you guys. Kind, that was kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Um, um, and then the next day, um, I don't remember if I was home. You had to come back and meet her again. I had to come again. back. Yeah. And um, at that point... I think you slept at home the night before. Yeah, I think yeah. that I night, sent you home that night to sleep. Yeah. And then she had this machine that had all the little capsules. holes in it first where you put like the bottom of the capsules in and then she uh well actually she, she took it out and she poured it all into something a grinder and then probably, grinded, yeah. yeah and until it was a powder all the capsules were in it and then she poured it all over the capsules put the tops on it and then one and i forget how many it made and this is what my something. capsules looked like i'll put a picture of in here 90 something i got Usually, 90 something yeah she said anywhere between 75 and 125 is yeah. normal i think and then what? And then that was it. That was it. But the whole time she was here, her and Bill established a really nice, you know, educational... Like, she taught Bill a lot. He came mm -hmm. to the hospital. He told me all this stuff. I was like, I gotta talk to this woman because she's amazing. Like, she knows her stuff. And she was a lactation consultant. So, um... So that you need, have texted on needless to say of she is my right hand man like she is my security blanket and I would be lost without her because she has helped me so many times mm -hmm. you know at the drop of a finger a text she's just amazing she's like my little guardian angel so yeah anyway so that was our process it was pretty cool I would definitely yeah, do it, it again cool. um, I still have pills they are in the refrigerator and I'm just going to get to the questions because this answers a lot of questions. That, these are all the questions you guys ask. So basically, first question, will all hospitals allow for placenta to be taken for encapsulation or is this limited to birthing centers and home births? And her answer was, in most states, placenta release is a non-issue. In Illinois, there are no laws or re regulations. Occasionally, there is a staff issue or a minor hospital policy to work around, but it does not prohibit pl placenta encapsulation. Um, my... It's, she said, I have worked with 31 hospitals across northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin without an issue. The next question is, can the placenta be kept after a C-section to do an encapsulation? And her answer was, yes, moms having a cesarean can encapsulate. There is no conflict with vaginal versus cesarean birth whatsoever. The, number three, do the pills have any taste or smell? Do you have to sign any paperwork in case they make you sick? Uh, and her answer was, I work under a release and disclosure form. Because preparation standards and procedures vary, you should discuss this with your encapsulist. I offer various capsules based on dietary needs and requests. There should be no foul or odors. In a normal clear gelatin capsule, it just smells like a capsule. There is no strong meat smell, <laughs> meat smell, uh, no typical vitamin smell, and the taste is that of a typical gelatin capsule. Flavored capsules are available to those worried about seeing or smelling. However, I find the vast majority of my clients want, don't want the dyes or color flavor additives. And I could tell you right now, my pills, they don't have a taste either or a smell. I mean, they just, 
there, it, really nothing. I had preeclampsia with both of my pregnancies. I have one living child. Will the placenta encapsulation help me in future pregnancies if I choose to do it with my next pregnancy? And she said, there is no specific research on preeclampsia and pl placenta encapsulation. Preeclampsia is not completely understood at this time. Next question, how did you find someone that would encapsulate for you? Um, how did you get your OB to be okay with you taking your placenta and are hospitals okay with it? So her answer was, hospitals across Illinois and southern Wisconsin have been easy to work with. I encourage moms to put a, I am keeping my placenta and taking it home on their birth plan and to request their midwife and physician to make a note of it on their chart as well. This way, it's not a surprise to the staff once the baby's born. Some hospitals want a release form signed ahead of time of the birth, which we had to sign a release mm -hmm. form. You are not required to disclose what you are doing with the placenta. If asked and you don't want to discuss it, you could simply respond, I am keeping it for personal reasons. Placenta encapsulation is not regulated and there's many variances on how and where it takes place. It is a situation of buyer beware to understand what you are purchasing. I work through the Placenta Benefits Network. All PBI encapsulists are trained. Some become certified and some do not, something to be very aware of. Certified encapsulists are required to uphold all food safety standards, blood-borne pathogen handling, and be in compliance with their individual state laws regarding safe food handling and preparation. In the United States, safe food preparation requires in-client home preparation. Unless the encapsulist has a professional kitchen, which is state inspected and licensed, services are to be in the client's home setting. Currently, a commercial kitchen is not cost effective. She stressed that numerous times, yeah. both days. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. I also enca encapsulated my placenta. I was wondering if there's any benefits for my future health. Does it lower your risk for diseases, etc.? And her answer was, placenta has been used to manage menopausal balancing, and there is no data at this time about lowering the incidence of risk for diseases. So far, though, I mean, every mm -hmm. time that you've taken them, you haven't really... Mm -mm. It's been fine. Yeah. I mean, I had no postpartum anything, and I really only took them for the first three weeks after I had Gemma, and then that was it. She had me on a schedule of how to take it, and that was it. And then until your body starts kicking in the right. hormones again. And the yeah. same with my miscarriage. Now I'm 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 taking it again, but I'm not taking a lot. Just I'm just it's just to help your milk, wasn't right. it? Right. Oh yeah. Also to help my milk come back too. The next question is, how is the cost? Her answer was, cost varies greatly for multiple reasons. Locations across the country, preparation method, and location of preparation. You may encounter a typical range of 225 to 350 I really don't think it's something you can put a price on, though, because it's really... It's really well, that's, I mean, there's your rough. Yeah. 225 to right. 350 It's going to vary. Any Anytime you get a consultant, you mm -hmm. are going to get varying you know, right. prices. So... Um, okay. I think it was worth Absolutely. Yeah. After I had my twins for about two months, I had bad anxiety that I cried every single night. I'm pregnant again and was wondering if placenta encapsulation would help this. Her answer is, placenta is all about creating balance. Speaking from a standpoint of traditional Chinese medicine, placenta is tonifying and warming. A postpartum mom, post 24-48 hours, is regarded in a state of cold and damp. The body is in mass transition. Supplementing with placenta is believed to bring balance and thus relief from the roller coaster of emotions and hormones, which, which can exacerbate mood, low energy, anxiety, depression, as well as help with circulation to bring balance and cope more effectively postpartum. It's also used to enhance lactation. This is very educational. Or just lots of chocolate. <laughs> Um, question, does she know someone in Mexico for placenta encapsulation? And she said, the Placenta Benefits Network does not currently have an encapsulist in Mexico, and I don't know of anyone out of network either. She will check on this. What course did she take? First question. I am trained and certified through Placenta Benefits. Oh, I have been certified for almost seven years. Um, I have encapsulated just under 500 placentas. I expect to hit that milestone by the end of this year. Um, has she ever found placentas to be gross even before starting doing this service? And she said, no, I don't find them gross. What is the most unique placenta she has seen? And she said, my most unique placenta was a mother with a baby with trisomy 18. 
What other service does she provide? Can she support herself financially doing this? Her, her answer is, I focus entirely on placenta encapsulation as a profession. While many people are also doulas, I love to focus all my energy on the postpartum. I used to take doula clients, but found the time and variability of working the two together would be too much for me in my circumstance. I am also a retired La Leche League and Breastfeeding USA counselor. I was active for more than 10 years, so I do provide lactation assistance if requested for my clients as part of my service. I do not charge extra for lactation. It is just an added bonus to me, and it works nicely as I'm in my client's home for two days. Placenta encapsulation is a two-day process. I could not rely on placenta encapsulation as sole support. The schedule has great swings of inconsistency. Um... And I just want to say that she has been my lactation. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. Everything that she has told me has worked, and she is the reason I am still breastfeeding. At all times of the day. Amazing. In a, amazing. All, all night, actually, yeah. I was talking above, to her in the middle. Ab above and beyond yeah. is, you know. Not even, know, not yeah. even, yeah. She's been amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> what is the biggest min misconception of placenta encapsulation? Her answer is... People hear uh, placenta encapsulation and think it's some kind of weird time capsule, like a vision of organs and formaldehyde. <laughs> it's alive. Yeah. Um, next um, question. Can you do cord blood, tissue banking, and placenta, and placenta encapsulation? And she said, yes, cord blood banking and placenta encapsulation is completely compatible. Uh, next question. Is there any reason you would not encapsulate? Example, Pitocin, epidural, or health concerns during pregnancy? And her answer is... Two clear reasons not to encapsulate are if the mom is a smoker, and two, if there is a chorioamnio infection. Your encapsulist should speak with you about certain STDs and STIs. Some of them may change her protocol or equipment concerns. Formal data is poor. Anecdotally, many moms using common birthing meds and with typical pregnancy issues, group B, strep, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, continue to encapsulate and report great benefits. Next question. What have you noticed is the most common reaction of the partner and the client's family when seeing the placenta and pills? She says, <clears throat> because I work in my client's homes, I have a lot of interaction with family. They are generally very curious. Even skeptics tend to ask a lot of questions. I enjoy fielding the questions, and I think the vast majority are enlightened to understand that even if it's not for them, and they might not choose it, they could better understand why someone else would. Their dad, the dads are overwhelmingly supportive. I've been, I've been contacted by many dads wanting to give uh, placenta encapsulation as a gift to their partner. Of course, I end up talking with mom, but it's always interesting when the dad reaches out first. I have had fathers reach out to me postpartum and thank me, stating that they see such a difference with their wife after they've taken capsules. And you too, I mean, you're, it kind of changed his whole, he was like, when he came to the hospital the first day, he was like, you're, you got to hear this. You got to hear what she did. And what it I, was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Okay, question. Not that many left. How, many, how far in advance should people book you? I couldn't find anyone in my area with availability. She says, I love people who plan ahead, but I get a whole array. I have moms who call me at six weeks pregnant. I have repeat clients who call me when they take a pee test on a stick. I have people who call with a baby in their arms and everything in between. Last minute add-ons can be very difficult because I only focus on placenta encapsulation and do not have a secondary client load such as a doula work. I am able to accommodate almost all requests. And she said, I'm curious, what area are you in? Next question. Are there any contradictions for consuming your placenta? I have PCOS and low milk supply. My lactation consultant said to stop taking my placenta pills because it wasn't helping the situation. Her answer. I answered the contradictions above. I have had many PCOS moms. PCOS is a condition of hormonal imbalance. Compromised milk supply is a concern with PCOS because lactation is all about hormones as well. So a system out of balance is a system with problems. I have a clinician locally whose focus is female hormone balancing. She refers her pregnant PCOS clients for encapsula uh, placenta encapsulation. Some lactation consultants continue to spread inaccuracies with placenta. I believe what happens is they know the data on synthetic progesterone in very high doses, such as the case with the mini pill. They recommend against uh, placenta encapsulation because of this, but it's flawed thinking. The mini pill, um, progesterone only birth control, is one, very, very high dose. Two, it's synthetic and placenta is bioidentical. And three, there actually is a lactation study on, on uh, placenta encapsulation. 
So while I can appreciate a statement such as, it's not well understood or I don't know enough to recommend either way, I continue to hear lactation attendants make strict statements which cannot be substantiated. Next question. I'm 12 months postpartum and I still have a jar of pills in the freezer. How long are they good for and what can I take them for? Also, if we are TTCing, would taking them have any side effects? Her answer, placenta prepared safely according to traditional Chinese medicine will keep indefinitely if stored in a cold, dry environment. I recommend the fridge short term and the freezer long term. Placenta is not recommended while pregnant because the shifting hormones are natural to grow the baby. There is no scientific data or anecdotal to support placenta while TTC. Have there been actual studies done to say that this actually works? I mean, you would think that humans would be eating it or encapsulating it as pets eat their placenta. Her answer. There is a growing body of research. This link has current published research. There are more studies in the works coming. Two areas of information, two areas of information which include scientific research and anthropological research and findings. And I'll put those two links in the description box down below for you guys. Uh, question. Does she ever run into any issues with hospitals when collecting the placenta? How, how long are the pills useful postpartum? And what questions should I ask when shopping around for a placenta encapsulation specialist? And her answer. I have worked with over 30 hospitals without issues which couldn't be worked around. Most moms take the capsules three to six weeks. It varies based on the mom's individual needs. I send my clients an extensive fact. These are questions that you should be asking if you're going to hire a placenta encapsulation specialist. Number one, how were you trained? Number two, are you certified? What does your certification make you accountable for? Number three, do you hold a food handler's license or a food manager's license? In Illinois, they should have the latter. Number four, what method do you use? Raw versus traditional Chinese medicine. Number five, where do you pre prepare the placenta? Number six, you, make, uh, you may ask about equipment, what's provided, what is not, and sanitary protocol. Number seven, ask what kind of capsule is used, the size and the ingredients. Number eight, the logistics of your area and birthing location. Number nine, the cost and the paperwork. Number 10, Ten. additional add-ons. I, I offer lactation assistance and an included tincture kit and salve recipe upon request. Some people charge extra for these, I do not. I chose not to prepare tincture for two reasons. One, I can't complete the finished product because it has to sit for many weeks. And two, if I sell it and provide the ingredients, I am technically reselling alcohol. So there's it. These are all the questions that you guys asked and hopefully she answered all your questions. Um, the one where she answered, is there research on it? There's a couple things that we're finding, like with the natural killer cell, you know, our infertility clinic stopped um, offering mm -hmm. the uh, interlipid injection, injections, probably because they don't believe in it. But over in Europe, it's a big it's thing. Huge. It's huge. It's a it's big huge thing. In Europe, yeah. So, you know, it, it depends on where you get your information. Yeah. Um, you know, some people, like she was saying, lactation, lactation consultants, uh, suggest against it. So do your research. Get, I would get a second opinion. Do your research. Get a second opinion. Just, I mean, look stuff up for sure because this woman has been a plethora of knowledge for us and has changed my ways of doing things and helped me. I almost gave up breastfeeding when we came home because Gemma was not latching on. She was just playing around on the nipple. She would not latch on. And I went and she, she got her, but that day I went to her house, I came yeah. home and the next day Gemma was strictly breastfeeding. Like it was amazing. So, um, another thing I don't think was in there was, um, menopause. Did, did she mention anything yeah, about menopause? She said you could take them for menopause too. Okay. So yeah, the ones that are in my fridge, like I'm just going to keep them until I need them for menopause probably in a few years. I don't know when that'll happen, but yeah. So hopefully we answered all your questions. Um, I hope this was helpful. I just wanted to do this video because I think it's so damn educational and so interesting and you and just so many people are don't know about it or they hear it and they're like, ew, you're going to eat your placenta and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to eat my placenta. Why wouldn't you? It's a natural way of balancing your hormones. Like, so yeah, so that is it. Um, if you guys have not seen my latest video of the Beyond the Willow Tree, I also had my placenta um, made into a Pandora charm, which I'll show you a picture of it here. And I also had the umbilical cord ground up into a, they, she, this company makes jewelry out of your DNA. So they take breast milk, 
they take your placenta, they take your umbilical cord, hair. and they anything, lax of hair. I have one with breast milk that they make into resin and they put a lack of gemma's hair around it. I have one with the umbilical cord with some glitter in it and one with the placenta in it with some glitter. And they're now on my, my you know, Pandora bracelet for, I have one just dedicated for Gemma and it's like the best keepsake ever. I'll put a picture in here so you guys could see, but oh my gosh. I'm so happy we did all this and I'm so thankful that she kept the umbilical cord for me and I'm just, I mean, <sighs> thanks for Bill for sitting here with me. I didn't have a choice. No, he didn't. I was coerced. Um, and thank you to my my angel for, for answering all these questions and that's all we have. So we will see you all in our next video and... Not uh, me. You'll see him. Eventually you'll see him. But uh, for now, that's it. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye.